Harry Walker, good morning. Hi, how you doing? You know, we, uh, we've worked together many times on quite a few recordings. One thing that I've always wanted to ask you that I never got around to was, what age did you start playing the guitar? About age nine. During World War II, my dad worked steady four to twelve at the shipyard, so I would stay up Saturday nights and wait for him to get home. He worked seven days a week. And I'd listen to the Grand Ole Opry, and I heard a steel guitar, a brand new instrument. And I asked my mom for one for Christmas, and instead I got a fourteen-dollar Sears and Roebuck F-hole guitar. <laughs> flat top. Uh, yeah. First time I got in front of a crowd was when I was. I think it was 10, I'd been taking guitar lessons for about a year. And somebody talked me into playing for a PTA meeting. I guess my mother, I don't know. Anyway, I had to play for the PTA meeting in the auditorium at the Clayton School. And I was behind the curtain. I stood up there and they opened the curtain and there was everybody looking at me. And I didn't, I about fainted at that point. <clears throat> but then I somehow I started playing a song that I didn't know how to stop. I couldn't stop. I didn't know how to stop it. <laughs> Once I got started, I couldn't quit. It just went on and on and on and on. How old were I think you then? ten. Oh, ten. I think they finally pulled the curtain on me. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> that was my introduction to playing in public. Now, did you like continue that? all through high school. And I played guitar off and on, a little bit here, a little bit there, nothing ever really serious. Recreational. Yeah, just, just for fun. Now. We just had a lot of fun. We'd get together at Harry's house or, or my house. Harry had a, uh, I had a, a Hammond at the time that uh, was an old Hammond C3. Harry bought a Hammond M3. I remember on one of his, Harry's videos, he introduces your dad playing. He said, here's Jim Cheadle on the Hammond M3. <laughs> And I, and I thought it was funny because nobody ever talked about a Hammond M3. It was always a Hammond P3. It was a significant Hammond, so I got a kick out of that. But this is, we did it, you know, every couple of weeks we'd get together and, and uh, never, never formally, but a lot of fun with friends. Always had friends over. And I'd take my guitar and I'd sing country music. And one time they buried it on me because I got tired of hearing country music. <laughs> it was mostly country. Harry had, Harry had sheet music has, I guess, still sheet music yet. He had all the good sheet music and, and uh, all the, mostly 50s, I, I shouldn't say country. It was a lot of the 50s music. That was his generation, my generation. Popular songs that I liked as I was growing up. 1952, <clears throat> um, he worked in the, at, we both worked at DuPont he was already working there in the shipping department and I started to work there in the uh, clerical department and we met there and started dating. We'd go to uh, the Oasis in Mullica Hill on Friday nights for to dance and then over to Woodstown to the diner to get something to eat. We did that for a couple of years and um, then Harry went in the army. It wasn't until I got in the army that I began to began to wake up. All my army friends were college graduates. It began to occur to me that they weren't any smarter than I was. I started going to to Extension College at the University of Virginia Extension, of course, while I was in the army. And uh, then after I got out, I applied for college at uh, a few places. I, I took one look at my high school transcript and said, uh, go back and make up all the courses you either failed or didn't take, mm -hmm. then come back and talk to us. Mm -hmm. So I went to Lincoln Prep in Philadelphia at night for two years. It was an accelerated high school. You could do a year's work in six months. And I made up two years' worth of math, two years' worth of science, two years' worth of languages. And did, did that in two years. At night, then I applied for college and got accepted to uh, Rutgers in Camden. By that time, David had come along. And son David was born in <clears throat> 57. And I continued to work at DuPont while Harry was going to Rutgers. I went to Camden for three years, uh, graduated in three years with a degree in, in uh, science. 
then went, then got a job at Mobile, and then went to work, then went to uh, school at night at Temple, and uh, got a degree in analytical chemistry. Yeah, worked for Mobile well, Research and Development, had a good job, good pay, good benefits, and good retirement. Well, it was you and your team that came up with uh, Mobile One. Mobile One. Synthetic yeah. oil. Yeah. That's quite an accomplishment. Well, I was on the uh, analytical end, not the development end. Right. They made it and I analyzed it. Oh, okay. And then uh, Kim came along in 1962. Harry was graduated from Rutgers by then and went to work for Mobile. Uh, I'm not sure of the time frame. I would say, I'm, I'm guessing, maybe 10 years before I moved up here, so it make it like 20 years ago, something like that. And uh, I know Harry, uh, Harry had a, uh, owned a property on uh, Broadway in Pittman. And, and he was over there uh, on a ladder, I believe cleaning out the gutters, you know, from with leaves and stuff, and the ladder started to slide, and Harry fell to a, a concrete driveway, and that's when he injured his back, right around that time. Sadly. I think it all, from my knowledge, I think it almost destroyed him. I mean, it was, uh, how, does, how does a person deal with that? You know, he was so active, and and such an outdoor, outdoors person with the scouting and the skiing and the bicycling and, uh, and to not be able to do this anymore. But, uh, but he survived and uh, I guess maybe music is, you know, fills a large part of his life now, fortunately for him. I think he's done amazingly well. Uh, it's it, it's really amazing. I, I don't know. I, I complain enough as it is just bringing my equipment when I have plenty of people helping me. I, I don't know how he does it. Like. You know, bringing all his his amp and his and all his equipment and just by using his uh his lift on his van, it's very incredible. He does things that, that you know I I don't imagine I don't know how he does. I mean, he does he does many things that some people that you know walk normally would never try. You know, I, I don't know how he does that, but he does. <laughs>